I recognize that there are people that are beginners, there are people that are intermediate, and there are people that are advanced. Beginner means you became Muslim last month or you realized you're Muslim last month. Okay, that's either way, beginner. Okay, that's okay. And so if, you, if you're 47 years old and you just realize, it's okay, good for you. Good for you. Some of you ladies are wearing hijab for the first time, good for you. Or you're wearing it just during this event because you don't want to feel awkward, good for you. No problem. It's all good. No, no judgment here. Okay, you're coming to learn Quran, I'm happy. Some of you guys are, this is like the first time you're in an Islamic environment, excellent. This is great. Okay, so uh, this is, you know, congratulations on indoctrination into the cult. So, <laughs> but I want every, so I want to start from the beginners. I want to start from the beginners. The beginners here, many families are beginners and that's okay. Uh, many people that may even be Islamically oriented for a while now just haven't been able to get get systematic with their learning, right? And in a, in a, in the learning sense, they're also beginners. So this advice is kind of across the board. Um, for those of you, you don't have to raise your hand, but those of you that want to share something, how to begin discussing Quran with your family, with kids especially. Those of you that have kids and want to be able to have a conversation with your kids, your seven-year-olds, you're you know, six and older maybe. Seven's probably better for, for what I'm teaching right now. Seven's probably better. Seven and older, you want to be able to have meaningful discussions about the Quran with them. How do you do that? Well, you don't do that with Surah Al-Haqqa. Okay? So, so and it's, there's got to be age-appropriate Quran education, right? So one place that I recommend for you uh, is you can, you can start this in Ramadan or maybe you can start this after Ramadan, but there are about 12 story nights that I recorded um, that are meant for any age audience above seven. Any age audience can, can get something meaningful out of it. And it's not a geek out lecture like these. It's actually, it was my pent up desire to do stand up comedy one day and I found a channel to do that Islamically. <laughs> and that, that was story night. So I'm telling a story, I'm cracking jokes. It's a light environment, right? Even non-Muslims attend and enjoy it. Many, many Christians, Jews have attended it and benefited from it. Uh, there's 12 of them. They're all recorded on, uh, on, on Bayana TV. And you can just do one every Friday night instead of what people in Delaware do, watch a movie on Friday night. You can take Friday night and take your kids, have a seat on the couch, and just listen to the whole thing or a part of it or whatever. And it's just me telling a story. There's nothing, it's just me telling a story, right? And then you have a week to just kind of casually talk about it with yourselves, with the kids. You don't have to know the Arabic at all. It's just, just a story and some of the things you learn from that story, right? You're not even taking notes. It's casual. And you're doing that for 12 weeks. I'm telling you that's a really great way to introduce the Quran by way of its stories and by a non-intimidating way, right? So that would be a good starting point for families, for, uh, you know, a family discussing Quran together, right? So Story Nights would be a good resource for you. Okay. Uh, for uh, teenagers and college students, that are interested in getting started with studying the Qur'an, like they'd like to understand the Qur'an better, my first recommendation would probably be a course I taught, it's almost a decade ago I taught this course, I taught it in Texas, to a bunch of teenagers in the summer. Some parents wanted to imprison their teenagers during the summer and hand them over to me, and so I had them, th these teenage kids, in my campus for an entire month, and I came, I, I put this course together to give them an overview some passages of the Qur'an that I think young people should know. Some places in the Qur'an every young person should know. And I called it uh, the, a thematic overview. So even if you don't know the whole Qur'an, it's like if you, even if you don't know the whole building, you know the pillars of it. You know the main parts of it, right? And uh, this was done meant for a young audience. What, what I think some of the younger audiences here can do, some of the boys and girls here can do, is not only can you learn, listen to these lectures, you can memorize those passages. N even if you don't memorize the entire surahs, you can memorize those selections. And you can then, the second or third time you listen to it, you can take some notes on the surahs you already memorized. And you can start your own study circle, halaqa, in your high school, in your campus. You know, if some of you young people are doing khutbah on campus or, you know, a study circle, this, is gi this will give you material to start doing Quran-focused sharing in your circles. 
or it'll be your first steps because you know the, the best way to learn something is to teach it and not teach it for the you know to be an influencer I'm not talking about that hey guys join my Instagram I'm gonna be talking about no 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 just start a circle you know share it with friends and family it'll it'll build confidence in you also it'll build public speaking experience in you also even if it's in a small setting and it'll also expose your ignorance people will ask you questions you won't know the answer which will compel you to learn even more right so it'll be a really good first step for you to do that okay now for a, for everybody like this is generally somebody says hey in the next 5 years re realistically without quitting my job without uh, you know, moving, uh, moving to a desert and sitting under a tree to learn, uh, I want to be able to study and be educated in the Qur'an. I want to be able to get a good understanding of the Qur'an while the li keeping the life that I have. How do I do that? Systematically. Be ready for a long, slow, and very enjoyable journey. Just mentally prepare yourself. It's not a course where you do it for this many hours and you're done. Just be ready. Quran education is a lifelong thing, and it becomes more and more enjoyable as you continue. If you're ready to make that lifelong commitment, I consider it, I compare it to diet and exercise. Diet and exercise is not a seasonal thing. It's if either you're committed to it or you're not. And you can have off days, but the diet and exercise are not the exception. They're the rule. The, the, the burger and the cake are the exception, but the healthy eating is the the rule, the majority of the time you're eating something right. If you make that lifestyle choice, if that's what you want to do, I can help. I'm not the final resource, but I'm the helper in between. Until you get advanced enough, you can do your own stuff. The first thing I would want you to do is a course called Divine Speech. Okay, it's about 16 hours long. You can listen to it casually on your commute to work or in the kitchen or you know, just, just put in headphones or whatever, or every weekend you're listening to it, but go through the whole thing. The purpose of divine speech is just to have you realize how divine the Qur'an is. That's all. It, it's not teaching you a course material on the Qur'an, it's just what makes me, it was actually driven by me, what made me so comfortable acknowledging the divinity of the Qur'an. So that's why I called it divine speech. I used to teach it around the country. I've taught it here too many, 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 many moons ago. Um, but then I retired the course. It's turned into a book. Some universities in the U.S. are teaching it also, uh, using the book also. Um, the book is hard to get a copy of, but you can get it if you make lots of dua. But the, the series is there on Bayina TV. Yeah, the series is there on Bayina TV, and you can start watching that. That would be the first step. And it's casual listening. You're not taking any notes. Um, even for people with background in Arabic and Islamic studies, but I'm, I'm still focused on the beginners. I don't think, by the way, you'll do a divine speech, and then after that, there's something called concise commentary. How many people here have read a translation of the Quran or tried to read a translation of the Quran? Can you call out some of the challenges you have when you read a translation of the Quran? Understanding, that's a good one. It's hard language, good. What else? Hmm? Vocabulary. vocabulary. What else? Extended meaning. Extended Old style language. What about the contents? The con What's the background? I'm not getting it. Sure, sure. What else? Anything? El any other challenges you have in reading? The relationship between the subjects. Some things are lost in translation. Yeah. The pronoun changes, you became they, became I, became we, became you, became they, became I, right? So that happens quite a bit. Yes, in the back. The meaning, good. The backstory. The gap between the ayat, sure. So th there's a bunch of challenges. Yes, yes. Long words, give me one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, don't give me one. Okay, it's okay. So here's the thing. I had the same problem. I, when I first got excited about learning the Quran, I didn't know Arabic. So somebody gave me, one of my teachers gave me, uh, uh, Allah reward her, she gave me a copy of the Yusuf Ali translation. And I used to read it on, my, uh, on, the, on the F train going to college from Forest Hills in Queens. Okay? And I'm reading, Hast thou not seeneth? And then I was reading, Glad tidings to the believers. The first time I read Glad tidings to the believers, I was like, why is there detergent in the Quran? And why is it happy? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> so, so yes, there, there is, it, is a, it is difficult to read translation, and there's a lot lost in translation. So what I did to help with that is, so how many people are here? Gamers? Gamers? Okay, mashallah. mashallah. You, you, my, you my people. You are my people. Okay. A lot of the boys. Okay, some girls. Okay, good. Um, Allah help us all. So, <laughs> so in video games, you have a walkthrough, right? G with video game walkthroughs. That was, that was planned. This guy, man, this guy, I tell you. So I was, going, I was leading the prayer. Okay, because my baby, you know, what it is, it is what it is. I put him down. He looks at me for a couple of seconds. <laughs> and then he goes around. <laughs> and he, just, he does the whole stuff. He does the whole stuff. He does the whole rounds. And then he'll, if you have your glasses or your, your, your phone, it's going to be wet by the time the Salah is done. Right? That's, that's, that's Hadid's thing. This guy, he's walking around too. And he's just, he's walking around, walking around, walking around. And then as soon as Salah is done, he starts behaving. <laughs> you know, like, okay, I see how it is. <laughs> he's, I mean, as soon as I said Salah, he sat down. He's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, so there is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So there, there's a there's a challenge with translation. So what I did was consider it a walkthrough of the Quran, a simple walkthrough of the Quran. Here's what's the background behind this ayah. Here's something that's connecting these ayat together. Not too much detail like here. If I was doing Suratul Haqqa in a walkthrough style, the whole surah would take 25, 30, maybe an hour. An hour, the whole surah is done. Right? And I've done that already. I've done the entire walkthrough of the entire Quran. It's called concise commentary. It's there on Bayina TV. Uh, I did this about 11 years ago. I completed it 11 years ago. And uh, it's um, after you do divine speech, I would want you to do that. Just You're not even taking any notes. This is just you. I, I, I assume this is the, your way of going through a translation of the Quran without being uh, glad-tided. Okay? So this is like... Inshallah, the f your, your first relatively less confusion walkthrough of the entire Qur'an, which I think is a pretty exciting goal, right? And so even if it takes you a couple of years or you want to go through it a couple of times, before you take a deep dive, Surah Al-Haqqa was a deep dive, right? Before we think about a deep dive, let's at least get a full view of what's going on in the book from beginning to end, right? And my recommendation is take a year or two to do that at once or twice. Just do it a couple of times. So you have a good picture of the book, and w the next time you're reading a translation, you have some of the necessary background information already exposed. Right? You, you got hit with it once already, so you have a good idea of what's going on in the book, and some of the complications have been simplified and things like that. Right? That's your second round. And uh, like I told you, I'm, I'm hoping that you, I can convince you to be a lifelong uh, participant in the, in the journey of the Qur'an. And so once you're done with that a couple of times, then you can begin taking a deeper dive. And the deeper dive for myself is still ongoing. I told you this is another 14, 15 years before my deep dive is complete. Right? So, but you have your work cut out for I've, I've The last 15, 20 years of my work are now available to you for, for you to go through at your leisure. Right? So it, this is different from YouTube because YouTube is everything all over the place. But you know, TV is, here's a, Here's a plan for you to educate yourself with the Qur'an. One of the most encouraging, exciting things I saw this year, I met a family in Australia. Their kids, the two daughters, they're 13 and 14 years old. They go to public school, and after every weekend, they go through the concise commentary, the, the, the brief walkthrough translation. And the girls were up to 11th juz of the Qur'an. Okay? And uh, over the last year, they had done that every weekend as a family, and they just discussed it, discussed it, discussed it, and they got to 11 juz of the Qur'an. And these girls, at 13 and 14, were more educated in their religion, just by doing that, than most adults in the Muslim world. Right? And it, it made me so happy to just see that some parents said, you know what, we're going to invest in our kids' education, not by outsourcing the problem and putting them in some daycare program, or some, you know, drop them at the, at the doors of a Sunday school. And then, No, 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 we're going to do this ourselves with them. 
We're going to educate ourselves in the Quran while educating our kids in the Quran, and we're going to discuss it together. And it was a really beautiful thing to see, you know. And it, 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 it's exactly what I was hoping would happen with this resource. My, my hope was that people use this as a way to connect to the Quran in, in, as, a lifetime, as a lifetime commitment. Some people ask the question, why did you not make all of this free? Why didn't you put it on YouTube? All of it. I said, okay, here's, why. here's my number one reason why. Because I think YouTube makes enough money already. I, I think they make pretty good money. And I'm not interested in making them richer. I'm interested in building Muslim institutions. And I'm going to talk to you about the vision later. The vision that I have for Bayina TV and how I want it to grow and what I want it to turn into. I'll talk to you about that vision later. But so far, I've only talked to you about studying Quran. I haven't talked to you about studying Arabic, right? The reason I haven't talked to you about studying Arabic is if you go through the concise commentary of the Quran, the, the walkthrough that I talked about, right? Even if it takes you a year or two, I say to you, don't learn Arabic for a year or two. Don't learn it. Even if you want to, don't do it. Even if I'm in a lecture making you feel bad for not learning Arabic, don't do it. Why? Because I want you to burn for a couple of years. I want it to hurt. I want it to hurt so bad that by the end of it, you're not doing Arabic because you're motivated. You're doing Arabic because you have no choice. You will not let it go if it's hard. You will not let it go because you're not motivated. If you're going to learn Arabic because you feel motivated, you will fall off as soon as your motivation falls off. But if you f if once, you, once it burns deep inside, when the Qur'an gets deep inside you enough, you're going to make this a necessity of your life, not a, an action driven by motivation. So I don't say start with Arabic. That's the wrong start. Start with Qur'an. Even if it takes a year or two, then I won't have to tell you to learn Arabic. You will come to it yourself. And you will find the motive. And the, the more challenging parts of Arabic, where most people become demotivated, those challenges will motivate you extra. Instead of those being the reasons you quit, those will be the reasons you work even harder. That's what's going to happen to you, inshallah. Okay? But you gotta, I'm, I'm, not, I'm talking to you as a teacher now. If, I, if you want to be a successful student, follow a plan. And with m whatever experience I have, this is the plan I'm telling you works. So just trust me on this and follow this plan. Now, for those of you who, know, who have friends or family that don't know anything about Arabic, they don't know any, they don't know what an alif is, they don't know what a ba is, or they barely know what an alif and ba is. And some of you were raised in a Muslim family, your parents forced you to learn how to read Quran, but then you lost touch with it, it's been many, many years, now you're a grown adult, educated, you have a normal life, but you don't know how to read Quran properly, it's embarrassing. Like if I opened up the Mus'haf to you right now and I said, can you read this for me, you'd feel like I'm embarrassing you. Right? And I feel terrible that you're in that position, and you feel terrible that you're in that position, and you can't exactly put yourself in a kid's class at a masjid where the eight-year-old is reading better than you. Right? That's embarrassing too. So I can help you with that a little bit. There's something called the 10-day challenge. It's on Bayina TV. I took a couple of new Muslims and Muslims that, have been, that ha didn't have a chance to study Arabic before. Uh, that had accepted Islam. They weren't that new, but they, they hadn't studied Arabic before. And in 10 days, I got them to start reading from the Mus'haf two hours a day. Just in 10 days. It was called the 10-day challenge. It's recorded. It's available. About 60,000, 70,000 people around the world have already done this. I met people who took Shahada, and 10 days later, they were reading the Quran because they were motivated to do that. So you can give that as a gift to friends and family. You can give them a Bayna TV subscription and then say, hey, and by the way, it costs $11 a month. Right, so the, the Starbucks boycott should go this way, right? So this is what I, <laughs> so so uh, that makes a really good resource for people to get started. At least they can enjoy reciting the Quran, reading the Quran little by little, right? So that's that's uh, you know for the very beginners. Now, um, for those that have done some Quran study, now they're ready to do the Arabic. Then there are the Arabic resources like Arabic with Husna. Uh, or the dream program. There are multiple approaches you can take. They're all available. I can talk to you about that at a later time. But I want to talk to you about my vision first. So, um, oh by the way, there's a there's a summer intensive uh, also happening this summer, but I think it's almost full, so I won't talk to you about that. It's happening in Istanbul. No, it's in person. It's no, it's in Istanbul in Turkey. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not even teaching. I'm I'm studying there. I'm going to li li uhasin qudrat kalami ana zahib. Inshallah, I'll be able to learn from the Asatis here, from the Urdun, and from Syria, and from the Maghrib, Inshallah Ta'ala. 
البرنامج مكثف يدوم تقريبا ثلاثة أسابيع إن شاء الله تعالى يا سوري و برنامج سيف تاميجيرا بس سيف تا داربي غاب ميزانام أوكي سوب تا شاو Okay, <laughs> so it's basically an Arabic studies immersion program. Uh, so if you're a beginner in Arabic or you know some grammar but you don't know how to speak, it's a multi-level program. You go there and you're just immersed in Arabic all day. Lunch is in Arabic, dinner is in Arabic, crying is in Arabic. You're like, ay, 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 ay. Like that's like, it's like everything's in Arabic, okay? You, if you have to go to the bathroom, study your Arabic because... <laughs> Nobody's going to talk to you like, you know, the, the people, Vulkarnain people, like, ooh, ah, ooh, ooh, they're not, no, 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 al <laughs> Arabiya. So, but the, it's, it's a way to learn. But I want to spend a few minutes talking to you about uh, the vision that I have for Bayina, inshallah, and I'll let you guys go. Um, there, are, there are two parts of my vision. Um, I'll be as, as open with you and as, I, I don't want to sell you anything. I just want to be, you've given me a week of your time. It's not easy to give this kind of time. So I'm going to talk to you as if you are bought into this vision. Um, and we're having a conversation over dinner. That's how I'm going to talk to you. Okay? When I started this work, um, I wanted to revolutionize how Arabic is taught. Because I felt like Arabic is the main obstacle for people to be able to appreciate the Quran. That's when I started. My view evolved since then. I believe it's one of the obstacles to the understanding of the Qur'an, but actually properly studying the Qur'an and contemplating the Qur'an itself is an obstacle. Like even if you know Arabic, you don't know how to approach the Qur'an in a systematic way, in a, in a, in a deep way. So there's two problems. One problem is Arabic studies, the other problem is Qur'an studies. Those are two major problems. And I want to be able to, whatever life Allah has given, uh, I think of this as the, you know, I'm in my mid-40s now, so I, I think of this as the last uh, chapter of my life has begun. And so I think about death and I think about whether it's tomorrow or it's 30 years from now or 40 years from now. I need to plan leaving, a, uh, leaving something behind that can make a contribution to these two problems. The one problem being how to revolutionize and democratize Arabic education and create a standard for it. So Muslims around the world across languages can learn the Arabic language and have access to learning the Arabic language for the purpose of accessing the Qur'an uh, and beyond. And then on the other hand, leave something behind that can open the door for even further study and investigation into the Qur'an. So, so that the end of my life and my work begum, begin, becomes the beginning for the next generation and they take it way further than I could have taken it. Right? And then as generations go, if that legacy continues, then more and more service is being done to the Book of Allah. And more, it's penetrating more and more in society. That's the vision. Now, my, my first vision was about Arabic. And so, eventually that materialized into a building, a campus in Texas, where I was teaching the Arabic language. I had full-time students and all of that. And, but I'll, I'll be, again, honest with you about my experience of that campus and, and what happened with that campus. I was teaching students Arabic, I was teaching them Quran, I was teaching these things, and I think I was doing a pretty good job. People were, students were in their fourth month, teachers would visit from abroad, like Moroccan teachers, Saudi teachers, Yemeni teachers would visit us and say, SubhanAllah, ta'allamu kulla hadha khilal sanatayn? I was like, la, hadha huwa shahrul rabi'ah. Like they'd say, they learned this much in two years? I was like, no, this is the fourth month. Like they were learning fast, because the, the curriculum works. The teaching methodology works. So the, the program was successful, alhamdulillah. I ran it for about a decade. But I realized something about the program. I was graduating these students, but then they were going on to not do Quranic studies. They were doing other Islamic studies, which is cool. But if that's what you want to do, then I don't want to invest so much in you. You can learn Arabic somewhere else. I, I want to invest in that which leads to my vision, which is the furthering of the study of the Quran. And in its shade, all the other Islamic studies. Because to me, that's the, that's the need of the hour. I respect all the other Islamic studies and the other institutions that are helping excel in other Islamic studies. I love that they're doing that. That's not what I'm doing. I'm not against it, but that's not what my focus is. My focus is to further the study of the Quran. And then I realized that this work is actually global in nature. When you have a building, 
when you have a campus, when you have a, a big masjid, et cetera, et cetera. You know what the people who run the place, you know what they're thinking about? How do we get more people through the door? How do we get more youth involved? How do we start a program that's going to get more interest? How do we bring in, bring in, bring in, bring in? And plus, there's the building maintenance. Then there's the, you know, the expenses of the building. Then there's the human resources. So how do we raise the funds? How do we do this? How do we do that? So instead of thinking about the big vision, the building becomes the vision. The problem is the building becomes the vision. So over the years, I actually started doing lesser and lesser programs on the campus. And I started doing programs in Indonesia, in Malaysia, in Turkey, in uh, Canada, across this country, Pakistan. I just started going and spreading the work everywhere. And I realized there's a lot more to do. And the, the worst thing I would do is to build, put all the focus on the campus. And there are, I'll, I'll be honest with you, there are people that I admire. I think they're profound thinkers, intellectuals that have a great, great bit to offer the ummah. And they became obsessed with the, the, the idea of an institution, brick and mortar, campus institution. And they spent the better part of the last decade raising funds for that location for those 30, 40, 50, whatever students. And they could have been impacting millions of people. But they chose not to do that. They chose to build that building instead, right? And I personally, all the best to them. I pray those institutions are legacies into the future. Allah accepts that from them. I don't see myself doing that. I see myself not as someone who will build an institution. I, want, I see myself as someone in my team, as someone who will help others build their institutions. So I want to be the cloud services, right? So all the other places are downloading us and using us, right? So I want to build a curriculum and a teaching methodology for Arabic that Islamic universities can use, that Islamic schools can use, that homeschoolers can use, that new Muslims can use, that you know, the, uh, universities in Pakistan can use, in Indonesia they can use it, in Turkey they can use it, in America they can use it, they can use it everywhere. Right? That's, that's the vision for the Arabic side. But there's a bigger vision for the Quran study side. Uh, and that is that I eventually, there, there's two parts of that. The, 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 the very grand vision is I want to have so much, so much subscription to Bayina TV, that so much money is coming into Bayina TV, that what Netflix is now doing, it's creating its own films, right? And it's taking, um, you know, what do you call Paramount Pictures and others out of business because they have their own powerhouse production, right? I think if enough funds are coming in through the subscription base that's benefiting from the Quran, I can actually start investing in documentary and full feature production film uh, inspired by the Quran. Uh, I, I can start investing in... Well, here's a so, so, wait, 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 yeah, wait. So and I I'm you know I'm 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 of a different uh, um, inclination in certain things. So I do believe, for example, I'll give you an example that I that that impacted me a lot. Uh, Astaghfirullah. When I when I was in Delaware, I was driving through. I watched some TV. So um, there was a TV show called House. Okay, uh, somebody admitted. Okay, very good. Okay, so House is a is really great, really well written TV show about a doctor who solves you know, medical issues that nobody else is able to solve. But he is a, a really a jerk. And he's a, it's highly, highly intelligent, makes everybody feel stupid. And he's a staunch atheist. He's a staunch atheist. And virtually every episode is him somehow making fun of some religion or somebody who believes in God. No professor, no intellectual, nobody was able to preach atheism more successfully than House was in the middle of a show. Right? That's the nature of propaganda. Right? You can normalize something and you can present the arguments by, some, by what looks like entertainment, but it's actually messaging. Right? And for some reason, Muslims haven't learned that lesson. We're not producing what we should be. I, I think there should be Quran-inspired anime. I think there should be. I think there should be Quran-inspired kids' shows. Not just overtly Islamic kids' shows where, you know, Alhamdulillah, mashaAllah, oh my God, ha ha ha. Th that's all cool. That's very good. But also stuff that even a non-Muslim can watch, they won't even know it's Islam until it's too late. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because you won't even know the show is about LGBT until it's too late. That's what they do. Because they have a very successful media strategy. 
we need a media strategy. And that's, that's maybe 10, 15 years down the line when we have enough of a subscriber base. But I want to I wanna get into that space because there's creativity needed in that space on multiple fronts, OK? Um, but let's come that's, that's way later. Now let's come a little further back. I want to be able to finish. My primary objective is I want to be able to finish my commentary on the Quran because I think with the team and with the growing uh, compilation that's happening and, the, and, the, and the, the perspectives that we're gaining, I think a lot of people will take some of the work we're doing and they're going to add to it in some amazing ways. Because when, a, when if I'm talking about like Surah Al-Qiyamah, I was talking about consciousness and there was a neurologist who was finishing his PhD research, was listening. He came up to me and shared things with me I would never have imagined. And I can imagine five years from now, he'll be writing a paper, producing a documentary on consciousness, inspired by Surah Al-Qiyamah, the, 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 the seeds of which were in this lecture, but the fruits are something revolutionary five years down the line, right? I was talking about Surah al the, the divorce, right? There may be a, a, an experienced divorce attorney, a, a, a counselor, maybe uh, uh, an arbiter, you know, uh, you know, maybe a judge, a county judge, somebody listening to this stuff, and they might be able to introduce legislation one day. They might be able to produce papers on this stuff one day, do an investigative journalistic piece on, maybe even revolutionize how some of these policies are implemented, not only in the West, but even in the Muslim world, right? This, all of this is possible, but it's possible if we make this stuff, we finish this work. <laughs> We've got to finish this work. Now the challenge is this, here's the challenge. Quran week, one week. How big is Surah Al-Haqqa? How many pages, you know? Huh? So a page and a half, two pages. Seven days. As 50% of the Quran is done. And what's going to happen if I get to Surah Al-Nisa? I can't do Quran life. I can to do Quran week. Right? So I can't, and it's, it doesn't make sense for me to do Quran week ayah number one to four in Maryland and then do five to eight in Sydney. It doesn't make sense, right? So I have a plan. Well, it's crazy, but I have a plan. Because the plan, for me, any plan has to be the vision is first and the plan comes second. Because a lot of times in our institution, the plan comes first. And the vision, what, there's a vision too? <laughs> so here's the vision and the plan. The plan is I want to start teaching uh, Quran studies and Arabic studies to a batch of students for 10 months at a time. So I'm going re to reinstitute the full-time dream program in 2026, when I'm done with the Quran week surahs. So it's going to take me all of 2024 and 2025 to finish these surahs. And in 2026, inshallah, I'm going to start a full-time program uh, for 10 months where I'm going to go through one of, like, maybe it's Surah Al-Nisa, because 10 months is enough time. And if I have 10 months of one group of hostage that have to go through the whole thing, I can do that. But I will teach them Arabic also. I will teach them, I will teach them, I'll teacher train them too. Meaning I'll teach them to become teachers. But it's, I, I don't want to, because I already got rid of my campus. So I'm not going to do it on, my, on a campus. Not on a Bayina platform. I'm going to go to a partner community somewhere, one community in the U.S. for Surat nisa Wait, wait, no, 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 wait, 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 hold on, hold on. There's lots of candidates. Michigan's a candidate, Texas is a candidate, Minnesota's a candidate, there's a lot of candidates, and M Maryland's a candidate. See, they're candidates. No, no, hold on, hold on, don't get excited. Let me finish what I'm, that's not the plan. Don't just let me get, finish the plan. So I'm going to do a surah, but I don't want many students. I want students that I can say even from 2024 right now, hey, this is happening in 2026. Show me that I should be investing 10 months of my life into you. Show me how much, how invested you are. Finish my entire Arabic curriculum that's already online. Finish the entire concise commentary. Show me that you've done the work. So I can take you further than you couldn't have gone on your own. I want to take and what, I, what I'm hoping for is in every community, there are some young men and women that are activists 
There are some young men and women that are good da'is. They can, they can do a halaqa. They're confident. They're outgoing. They're smart. They have a good career path ahead of them. I don't want somebody who's full-time in Islamic work. I want someone who's an MBA. I want someone who's a doctor. I want someone who's an engineer. I'm someone who's an entrepreneur. I want someone who works at the State Department or someone who works somewhere else. Like, I want, I want people that are accomplished in life, that are at the top of their careers, at the top of their Qur'an. That's what I want. That's that. I want a generation of people like that. I want a generation, like I want a, com a community where all these young men and women that are in their 20s and 30s, by the time they're in their 20s and 30s, they have their masters, PhD, whatever education they have, they're successful in their careers, and if there's every week a halaqa can go on by any one of those guys, they can give an excellent khutbah. They can get up and give a khutbah, excellent. They, they, and every one of them can pull it off. Because they, they know their Quran studies, and they have the path to deep Islamic studies. So I want to create that, I also want to do this in a way that I will do it once. Like, let's say I picked, Mar let's just say I picked Maryland, hypothetically, right? And I did it once. I did Surah An-Nisa. After 10 months, I'm going to leave. I won't come back. I'll come back to visit, but I won't come back for the full-time program. I expect that the people that I trained will carry that on. I want, I want every community to carry its own weight. I, I, I want to come teach how to fish, but then you carry on fishing yourself. I'm going to go next, the, the year after that, I'm going to go to Jakarta, and I'm going to train those teachers for a year and teach Surah Al-Ma'idah there. Train those teachers, leave. And then I'm going to go to Islamabad. And I'll spend 10 months there, teach a bunch of kids there, do the teacher training, get them running in whatever institution I partner up with, and leave and go to Malaysia the next year. And so the big surahs, each surah will become a location where I hopefully do some teacher training, create a and then I want to take all of these newly indoctrinated cult members from all over and I want to connect them to each other. I want to be able to build an alliance of these people, a network of these people that can then inshallah further each other also and build also. So that's kind of my crazy idea, inshallah, from 20, 2026 onwards, inshallah ta'ala. If you're, if you're thinking you want to be a part of that, because I, 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 my guess is the first of them, at least 2026, is going to be in the U.S. Whether it's in Maryland or not is not the problem. Don't, don't think, oh, it needs to be here. No, no, no. If it's not here, no. If that's, if, if that's your attitude, you're not fit for what I'm hoping to do. If you see yourself being a part of the Quran, the restoring Quran in the society legacy, if you want to be a part of that along with me and my team, then I want you to become very serious about your own personal growth. And understand, this is the last thing I'll share with you, I don't think that the Qur'an will penetrate society, Muslim and non-Muslim, until we abandon secularism. Again, what is secularism? People of religion have their own world, and people of profession have their own world. Until we bring that together so our doctors and our engineers and our accountants and our contractors and our business people are well educated in the Quran also and so our, our khatib is not just looked up to because they're a khatib our khatib is also looked, looked up to because they're they're killing it in every part of their life they're executing on all you know in uh, on all cylinders they're firing on all cylinders they're either an elite athlete or they are a, a professor at a university, they're, they're, they've got their own thing too. And on top of that, they're doing this. That will become the best of deen and the best of dunya. Isn't it? The Rasul of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had high credibility in Mecca before he was a prophet. Why? Because he was doing business. You know where credibility comes from? From doing business. He wasn't at home, not doing anything. He was engaged in business transactions. And because when you do business the right way, you build a name for yourself. You build credibility for yourself. Islam will not enter into the hearts if it's not coming from people that don't have credibility. And credibility comes from your dealings with the people. It doesn't come from your appearance. It doesn't come from your education. It comes from your dealings. So the people that are actually in the depths of society are the people that need the word of Allah the most. And the best, they're in the best position to share the word of Allah. They're in the best position to share. So that's, that's inshallah, the vision. Um, and it's a long-term vision because my eventual goal, what, I wanna, what I'm going to plant in these, these people's minds 
is I don't want you to become a doctor. I want you to become the head of the hospital. I don't want you to become the pharmacist. I want you to own the pharmaceutical company. I, want you, I need you to be the CEO of the pharmaceutical company. I don't want you to be a researcher. I want you to run your own labs internationally where you're doing the research, where you're conducting the research and there's a thousand researchers under you. Why? Because there's hi it's high time we developed and cultivated an, al an alternative to the conglomerate multi-billion dollar industries that are sucking the blood of humanity, right? They're the al-mutaffifin of our time. Allah says when they weigh from pe when they when they want their money from people, they take the full amount, but when they give back, they give back less. Isn't that every insurance company? Isn't that every pharmaceutical company? Isn't that the oil and gas industry? Isn't how are we not how are we gonna complain about those spaces and we're not in those spaces? How are we gonna do that? So that's that's the vision. I know it's grand, but if you're going to wish, if you're going to aim, you better aim high. You better aim high. And I, I think it's very, very, very possible to accomplish. The thing I need from you is to be, immediately the thing I need from you is to become ambassadors. What I need from you, inshallah, is I, I, I'd like for you to subscribe to Bayna TV. The, this surah will be uploaded there. Other surahs that have already been done from like uh, Surah Al-Dhariyat and in Scotland and Surah Al-Tur in Jakarta and Surah Al-Insan in Kuala Lumpur, all of them are recorded. Whatever gets recorded and edited gets, keeps getting posted and posted and posted under what's called the Deeper Look series. So this is part of, the Surah Al-Haqqa was part of the Deeper Look series, okay? Uh, and that's already available there, inshallah. I want, I'd, I'd really like for you guys to subscribe and I'd like you to encourage other people to subscribe. And more importantly, I'd like you to give uh, gifts to uh, other people to subscribe. Two things I have left to share with you and I'll let you guys go. Uh, one thing I have left to share with you is, even though our subscription is $11 a month, there are 45,000 people that are asking us for a subscription that can't afford it from around the world. And as much as I'd like to give all of them a subscription, our server costs and our hosting and streaming costs don't allow for me to do that. I need help in covering those costs, right? And that, that's uh, my vision for, I have a plan for that too. Because most of those people are not in the US or Canada or you know, some of the wet, better off countries. Many of those people are in, you know, in, in Bangladesh, some of them are in, Pak many of them are in Pakistan, India, uh, some of the, and, and Turkey because of its economic collapse, right? And the, the, the dropping of the lira, so, or South Africa, places like that, right? Where there's, there's economic difficulty, people wanna learn this stuff, but they can't afford to. I genuinely believe the, the Afghani community in America and Canada should be sponsoring every Afghani in Afghanistan that wants to learn this stuff. The Pakistani community in America and Canada and England should be sponsoring every single Pakistani that wants to learn this stuff. The Indonesians should be helping the Indonesians, the Moroccans, the Moroccans, the Egyptians, the Egyptians. If you want to help the entire Ummah, good for you. But at least take care of your tribe too, right? Because you, you want to help bring this change even in the Muslim countries. In fact, I argue we're doing better than they are in many ways. It's harder for a girl to wear hijab in Islamabad and in Karachi and in Lahore than it is in Maryland. It's harder. I went there, I know. They said they get bullied at school. They get made fun of. The teacher makes fun of them at school. And this is not just in, the, in Pakistan. This is happening in Bangladesh. This is happening in Egypt. This is, happen this is happening all over the Muslim world. It's hard, it's hard. The question, it's very difficult to wear hijab. I'm getting that question in Indonesia, the most populated Muslim country on earth. I'm getting that question there. I'm getting that question in Malaysia. Why? Because these devices have brought this ideology, the West Western ideology, all over the world. It's time we spread Quran ideology, isn't it? It's, 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 it's time we spread, you know, we, we stopped, we built the yaqeen at the bottom. We solidified that based on Quran, and then we can have powerful youth, inshallah. I, I really want to see, uh, I, I was even talking to some government officials in Pakistan, hey, why don't we just provide uh, college students a free Bayna TV subscription, so by the time they're done with college, they've gone through the entire Quran, and give them some college credit for it too, and encourage them so that, one, they don't fall into anti-Islam sentiments, and two, they don't fall into other extremist, within Islam, other extremisms that exist. Because those, that's a real danger too, right? 
So that's that's the other side. And then finally, that was one thing I wanted to share. Here's the last thing I want to share with you guys, uh, and that is that um, uh, I am looking for people that want to partner with me in this mission. This is not a one-man job. Even the Quran study, as you can see, is not a one-man job. I have a lot of execution ideas, but there's only there's only so much my team can do. I'm already exhausting them. But there are areas in which I need help, like strategic planning. And those of you that have background in strategic planning, uh, those of you that want to help, a, a Quran week costs about ten to twelve thousand dollars per Quran week, and it's much cheaper for me to stay home and do this. It's much much cheaper. But I choose not to do that. I choose to come to a community, and I, I'm, you know, Hadid is, uh, you know, my 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 youngest addition, so uh, I don't want to travel anywhere without this guy. So I, I'm, I'm just, if he's, he's stuck on a plane with me, he's, just, he's already been to, how many flights has he been on? 22? 22 flights already, yeah. He's seven and a half months old. He's a world traveler. He's been to Australia, he's been to, you know. His grandfather counts the number of planes. He's got the boarding passes. <laughs> but but the, the, the thing is that I, I want to be able to, if you want to help with that, you can. If you want to, uh, there's, there's other um, collaborative ideas if you want to help with that, if if you're from the tech space, the creative space, uh, if in which which in which way you can help, right? In which way you can help, I want you guys to email me. You can email me at sponsor at bayina.com, and kind of write out in what way do you think you can help. If you think you can help with, for example, translation, if you can help, if you think you can help with being a teacher's assistant. Or you you have some background in Islamic studies, you don't want to contribute to the Quranic studies component, the research component. Whichever way you think you can help, my I've given my team the job to, of putting you guys in different baskets, even if we don't reach out to you immediately, because eventually I want to build a network of people that are they want to contribute in some way. And it, the money is the least of it. Money to me is the least of it. It's the it's the human component that I'm very interested in and building the networking and 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 effectively, inshallah ta'ala, hoping to make this a global phenomenon. So uh, thank you so much for patiently, patiently listening to me. I have truly, truly, truly enjoyed being here with all of you. And I'm grateful on my behalf, my wife's behalf, and baby Hadid's uh, behalf. Alhamdulillah. I have khutbah here tomorrow. And then soon after we're heading to the airport, I have to be in the UK for all of Ramadan with, my, with, with them and my parents. Inshallah. So we're going to be in Manchester. We'll be doing something from there. Look for what we're, we're going to broadcast live from there. Inshallah. So you'll see some of that. Inshallah. So, um, uh, so and, and again, I'm very, very grateful for, for so many of you that attended this entire week. I hope you guys benefited from it. Inshallah. And uh, I hope to see you guys for one more Quran week at least next year. Inshallah. So, already, uh, inshallah. so we'll make that happen. And my special, special thank you for the Gaithersburg community that made me feel just as home as they made me feel the first time I was here so many years ago. It brought back beautiful memories to see some of those beautiful faces again and so many new ones. Uh, thank you so much for the wonderful kids that were here. Round of applause for the kids that were here, mashallah. And um, so very really beautifully well behaved and some great, really smart questions from them. My due apologies to those whose questions I didn't get a chance to get to. I pray that Allah gives us a chance to meet again. Uh, there, that is part of my plan. I'll probably come back here for a story night also, inshallah. Um, but if, you know, if we don't get to meet here, inshallah, we meet in a much better place where the branches come down. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.